Hi, and welcome to the All Things ITSM Global Podcast. We're coming to you from Fusion 15 in New Orleans. I'm Kirsty McGowan. I'm here with Mark Smalley. Hi, Kirsty. Carlos Casanova. Hi, Kirsty. And welcome to John Christie. Thank nice you. Nice to have you on board. Thanks. Welcome, uh, John. So, John, you know, we know obviously, uh, you know, the market, things keep getting tighter and tighter. Organizations, you know, we, we keep hearing the um, more with less kind of stuff. But really, a lot of this, I think, really comes back to just, you know, is it is it properly budgeted? You know, we don't have to do more with less if it's properly budgeted because you're, by, you know, I guess by definition already saying, hey, th you're not going to have enough money, but I still want you to do more than I'm giving you money for. So, how, you know, how do we work in that space, you know, in the budgeting side and getting that more closely aligned with the catalogs and everything cool. else? Uh, well, you actually brought up two of my favorite things. <clears throat> the first one is what I like to refer to as the myth of doing more with less. <clears throat> because we, we actually perpetuate this myth. Mm. And IT people, because we have a customer service focus, we actually really perpetuate this. Yep. And what have we been doing over the last five to ten years is we've been doing less with less with the same or yeah. less or more or less with less yeah. but what do we do instead of saying this is what i can do right. we turn around and drop the quality right so we go to 95% to 90% to 80% yep. and then we wonder why our customers are upset right. yes. and and far too often if you look at what you're funded to do in some groups 50% of what they do is related to funding right, right. and then there's all the other nice things they've agreed to do mm. but when it comes time to say did you meet your goals it's on what I funded you do. It's around your mission, yes. not all the extra things. Right. And I think it brings back the other challenge of, of budgeting, because if we think of the budgeting cycle, we're still budgeting the same way we did 30 and 40 years ago. You got the IT budget, when IT provided technology, and then whatever they had, you might use. Right. We're in the world today where customers can't work without the services. And we still make believe that each business unit goes and creates a budget, right. including all their initiatives, and then IT creates their budget, and then you roll it up to the CFO, who at that point has already decided how much, <laughs> how much is gonna get spent, yeah. and then we have all of this. Then we work backwards, and just on the budgeting yeah. side, but not on, this, on right. the scope side. So, you know, I like to think of, we gotta stop thinking of an IT budget because there's no such thing. What we have is money that belongs to the business, yes. our customers. And if we look at it as a debit card, that's a funded debit card, and how are we going to spend their money? Right. So if we come back and start thinking, what services do our customers need? Now we're back to the catalog, right? But <clears throat> what services do you need, Mark? Here they are. Here's what it costs. You're willing to pay for it. If you are, it's a valuable service. Yep. If you're not willing to pay for it, or you don't need that level of service, yep. now we start to get to that discussion. Right. Right? But the crazy thing is to think the IT group is fighting for a budget. Yeah because there's no way we know what's important to our customers. I mean, we like to think we do, but with the rate of change and what's going on, and who should fight for a budget? The customer. If they need it, it gets funded, right. all right? So there, there is a concept called investment-based budgeting, mm -hmm. and that is about the fact how much is each of our customers willing to invest in services that enable them to do their business. And if they're not willing to invest, not a problem. Right. You know, because as service providers, it isn't what I want to do. It's what is the business, our customers, through governance, yeah. right? Through yeah. the governance. But what do they, what do they need? Here's what it costs. Yeah, and from yep. a business perspective, IT is just one of the resources, one of the mm. business resources and assets that I use. Would I prefer to invest it into people or into buildings or to machinery? Or, so what's, how much should I be investing exactly. in IT? That's, exactly, right? That's another question. Right. How much should I be investing, and am I investing well, which is the, the, the yes. point you're making. Yeah. Yeah. Not, another interest, I ran, ran across some research recently that quantified the productivity loss in enterprises when IT goes wrong. And that, mm -hmm. apparently that's between about 4 and 10%, on average 7.6%. Business productivity, you know, business yeah. money is lost, okay. and that's usually a hell of a lot more than the IT budget. Oh, yeah. So you... Yeah. you I think uh, you, what you said about we're not talking about IT budgets, we're right. talking about the bigger. Right. And, the and, and we really got to bring it yeah. back to that, right? Because the other part is, does the business understand how, what business units are profitable or yeah. what products are profitable or not profitable? We well, they don't. Yeah. And, and even the, I'll say, the most cursory chargeback system is really an allocation system. Yeah. So <clears throat> do I really know what the profitability of a business unit? Yeah. Do I really know the cost? And I like to equate it to, 
You know, there are some groups that are really good. When you talk about manufacturing, right? Anybody's ever worked in manufacturing? Yep. They know their cost. Yep. And, and I did some work for a but, but on the manufacturing side, I've worked well, for manufacturing companies that they almost run as two separate entities. Yeah, but, but you know, I, I did some work for a car uh, manufacturer recently, and we were talking about it, and they kind of got it because IT costs roll up to IT costs per car, yeah. mm. right? right? And that's where you have yeah. to get and, to that level. Mm. And, yeah. and, and you can kind of miss it sometimes because, well, it's a big number, right? Yeah. They care about tenths of a cent yes. in an IT cost on a car right. because you think of all those pieces. Yeah. And, and I think that, again, bringing it back, it's do we have the right business metric? Mm -hmm. and, and we often confuse what all the IT metrics that we need to run our business with the fact mm -hmm. How do we contribute to the success yeah. or the cost, which ultimately is the success yeah. of what we produce? Yeah, those, those real IT metrics don't actually mean anything to the business at all. No. It's and only their impact on the bottom line that matters. Yeah. But that, I mean, that's, you know, one of the examples I use you know, from the config side is, you know, sometimes we, when you don't have the insight, you know, we'll scramble around, right? And we'll, you know, we have to bring it up because it's one of uh, a, a cluster that's supporting, but that's high availability and whatnot. Well, if that's in off hours, why are we scrambling around to bring a server back online that went down? It has zero business impact. So if you don't have the business insight to what was the cost there, so now you've probably run up the cost on you know bringing in off hour support to bring something back on, which it never really impacted. Needed, yeah. So you've spent more money rather than, you know, hey, we designed it, we architected it that way. That was the whole point. Yeah. We have redundant systems. Yeah. So why are we, you know, but when you don't have the insight into it, you have no choice but scramble and... and yeah, yeah. And, and that yeah. server's not needed till 10 o'clock tomorrow exactly. morning. So. Exactly. But, you yeah. know, that comes back to the challenge, which is, do we look at IT budgets as free, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Are you entitled? Is it a real dollar expense, right? And far too often, too many places, well, it's an IT budget, yeah. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm entitled, but it's your budget, and, mm -hmm. and even if you transfer the cost, it's not real money. Right. I'm sorry, it's all it real, money. real money. It's all yes, real, it money. real money. And so somebody has to step back when we have a change of any type, and somebody's got to say, what's it cost? What's the return? And I think sometimes we confuse the financial stewardship that we should have with our customers with saying no. We should, I don't think as a service provider we should ever say no. But we should say, this is what it cost. Here's the options. Right. Right? And, and, and if something isn't right, then we need to pose the question, is this expenditure, is this increase in service, change in service, features, I don't care what you want, what's the return to the business? Yeah. If we don't see it, we ask the question, and as long as the right level of authority approves it, because they're not gonna explain everything right. to us, I'm okay as long yeah. as the right level of authority approves it, yeah. right? That's but right. we have a responsibility to ask those questions. Right. Agreed. Yeah, I think there's, there's something I've noticed too is that we. A lot of, in a lot of cases, they tend to view the IT budget as something completely different from the HR budget or the, yep. or the budget to run the finance department or the, to, to run other parts of the business. Why should the IT budget be considered differently like that? Yeah. It's, it's still money and it's still the bottom line for the business. Yeah, and I guess that's the scary thing too now is, I mean, when you think about it, there is no operating outside of mm. IT anymore. They, they were, no. you know, for a while, we, there was still that struggle of, you know, it's a necessary evil. Mm. You can't, I mean, can't in any business, IT, you know. Well, but, you know, that's the other thing. You can't do it without it. They can't, you can't work. Right. Yeah. It is a cost. It literally is a cost for each of those business units. Yeah. But we still treat it as a cost over yeah. here. You know, HR doesn't pay for the payroll costs no. in your department, do they? And somehow you get charged for facility costs, yeah. especially if you want something extra, mm. right? Or you have a particular yeah. need. Right. Mm. Same kind of thing. Yeah. For IT departments who are struggling with financial management, do you have any pointers to, um, to get them in the right, going in the right direction? I think the key, the key thing to start with is you've got to get back, and I think there's, there's two challenges here. And if we look at the cost structure, is the same one we've had for 30, 40, or 50 years. We still account for hardware and software and network, right? Mm. So I think the first thing is understanding what the costs are but we've got to take it from the traditional mode and put it such that we can start to cost by service. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect. Right. You know, if you can get to 80 or 85%, it's yeah. good enough for, again, what are we doing? It's, it's more about yep. trending. Mm -hmm. right. So how do we get the, the right information yep. there? But I think really it's okay. about having our customers decide how much they can afford, what's the level of service 
that, that yep. they need to have. Yep. Well, yeah, thanks, thanks, Jim. You got it. You got to do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, John. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Great, this nice chatting with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, John. So thanks. Much.